They told me for years there was no money in podcasting. Well, they were all wrong. Sure. Favorite team all time and currently? Um, we'll do okay. MLB, MLB and Japan. I don't know if Japan's going to be the Tigers, clearly. But like MLB. Oh. Okay, so MLB, uh, favorite team of all time. Well, I, I would say, like, probably not even the Blue Jays, um, even though they are a Canadian team. I don't know if you're aware of this or if there is if there is such a thing in America where there's this kind of, like, anti-New York sentiment amongst yep. people who are non-New Yorkers. Yep. Well, there's a big anti-Toronto sentiment amongst most Canadians who are not in that region. And so hmm. Toronto was the team simply because they were the only Canadian team. But before that, it was the Expos. But I would say the team that I kind of followed or cheered for silently would be the Minnesota Twins because geographically, they lined right up with us. They were just south of us. And so that was my team. All right. Great Kirby organization. Puckett, Kent Herbeck. Yeah. Dan Gladden. Yeah. All that. Uh, yeah. Herman Killebrew. Was he on the Twins? He was, but I think that was before my time. Okay. Fair enough. Hey, Twins. Uh, they were good in the 90s. Early 90s. They won, they they won the 91 World Series. 91. And I think 87 as well. Um, they won. So, yeah. Man, I can't believe um, I just pulled that out of my ass. The 91 World Series was a Twins. That was that was like an educated guess on my part. Good job, good job. Um, do you still do you still follow Twins? Twins still your favorite team currently? Like favorite team to watch in MLB? Um, you know what? Truth be told, I don't watch a lot of MLB um, simply because of the time zone difference yeah, and my fair. schedule. Because the games are on like mid morning here, so if I'm not at work, I'm usually at home with the kids. But um. And, and then the other thing is, um, because I don't actually have the MLB channel, um, I would be relying on Japanese TV. And they'll broadcast games that feature Japanese players. And so right now, um, Kenta Maeda is with the Twins. Mm. So we'll get the occasional Twins game. But obviously, you know that they're going to show more Shohei Otani than anybody else. And so, yeah, um, I, I mean, I still like the Twins. I'll still look at how they're doing the standings and stuff like that. But uh, just the opportunity to watch them is not there. They're not a bad club, man. They... They they had some pieces. They're this Achilles heel is every time they make the playoffs, they play the Yankees. That's just right. that's just how it's been for like the past 10 years. And anytime they make the playoffs, they play the Yankees and they lose in four. That's just how it works. And it's crazy. Um, it doesn't matter how good the twins are that year, how bad the Yankees are. It's almost like, well, when you see those names line up together, you just know what's gonna happen, right? Yeah. It's honestly <laughs> the Red Sox have the same thing with the Angels. Um, when the Red Sox were on their tear in the early two thousands, up until like two thousand eleven ish. Like, I'd say, up. Oh, they're playing the Angels in the ALDS. And socks are going on. They're playing the Yankees. Uh-oh, nail-biter. They're playing the Indians. Well, who knows what's going to happen, right? And then they end up winning the World Series. And I have to go to high yeah. school. I have to go to school the next day. It's terrible. Um, <laughs> so, favorite player, um, all-time and currently, American and Japanese? Oh, man. Well, um, for Japanese players, um, can I pick two for all-time, even? Okay, so so Ichiro is one that like I don't know how you can not like that guy, you know, both as a player and just as an individual. Um, yeah. Just such a unique guy in all facets of you know his personality, his approach to the game, all that kind of stuff. Love Ichiro, and then of course Otani. Um, he's very different from Ichiro as far as personality and just makeup and playing style and everything. But how can you not be attracted to that guy? You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say Otani would be one of my tops. Yeah, me, me and me and Phil did talked about Otani extensively on our previous podcast. You know, we we talked a segment about like him being the face of baseball. And it's like, yeah, yeah, no, he is the face of baseball. He's on the cover of MLB The Show, which is coming out um, probably around the time this podcast is being released. So you can listen to this podcast while playing the game. I'm gonna be playing on my Switch. I'm very excited. Awesome. Um, yeah, he's incredible, uh, and he's he's doing something that hasn't been done in a hundred years, which is unbelievable so I'm, gonna, I'm excited to see him continue growing as a player i'm excited to see how long he continue to keep up pitching and hitting because i don't think he's going to be doing that for much longer personally i hope he does but I just, I just don't see it being plausible it's i mean it's really hard to predict what's going to happen there but honestly yeah i mean he's he's determined to do it he's dedicated to it where like i, I don't want to i don't know babe ruth's history or anything like that very well but I don't know how dedicated he was to keeping himself in physical and good physical shape or how, you know, insistent he was that he wanted to do both. But, you know, with Otani, I think the drive is there, you know, and that's a really big part of it. I mean, he lives, breathes, eats, sleeps baseball. And so whatever it takes, he'll, he'll make all sacrifices to make sure that he can do that. And so I'm looking forward, just like you, to seeing how long he can do that. 
I mean, personally, I'm banking on a solid five years. I think if you can do it for another five years, it's going to be phenomenal, and you can have to pick one or the other. Uh, I'm not questioning his character or his fortitude. I'm questioning the fact that his, his body is eventually going to give out because it's, it's a oh, very yeah. different game today. It's more physical. It's more athletic, and the talent is way different than the game was that long ago. Then again, pitchers back then pitch every three days, sometimes every other day. So people back then were a lot crazier too. So I don't know. We'll see. I I love Shoy Otani. I think he's great for baseball. He's great for the sport. And it's he's fun to watch, which is the most important thing. He's fun to watch. Uh, so give me your fondest baseball memory as a player, fan, however you want to describe it. So I've got a couple of, I guess, baseball memories um, from watching the game from the stands. And one of them would be actually, I think it was like my third ever MLB game at the Sky Dome, which is called what the Rogers Center now, or have they changed yeah. again? I'm not the sure. Twins, yeah, um, that was the Sky Dome. Yeah, so it was the Blue Jays against the Indians, and I remember uh, I was at the game. It was an extra innings, John Olderud walk off home run, and uh, we were actually up in like box seats, and it was just like super exciting. I got so excited, I jumped up and I slammed my hands down on my buddy's backs, and one of them was scared. He said, "I I felt like you were going to push me over the edge." <laughs> so that was a great game. It was totally, it was unbelievable. John Olerud, that is a name I haven't heard in I don't know how long. He used to wear the helmet in the field. Yep. Utility, utility man. He could play everything. First, second, third, short, outfield, whatever you need him to be, he could be. He was on the Yankees too. Was he? I, I'd forgotten yeah. about that. I, yeah, I kind he of was, used to forget stuff like that. But He was a utility man for the Yankees in the mid-2000s. Shout out to John Olerud, wherever he is on the world. <laughs> John Olerud. Love All it, right. Love it. Yeah. That's that's a great that's a great memory. So that right. that's from uh, North America and then and then in Japan um I've been to a couple of really good games um well more than a couple at Koshien Stadium which is in my background right now home of the Hanshin Tigers. But um the most unforgettable would be the time that I saw them go from down 9 nothing to winning the game 12 to 9. That was just an unforgettable experience. Do you remember what inning? What inning they were down 9 nothing in? Yeah, um, so the, it was it was against the Hiroshima Carp. It was um, they scored their ninth run in the top of the fifth. Okay, so at halftime, and then the Tigers got one in the bottom of the fifth, and then in the sixth and seventh is when they really uh, rallied for just a boatload of runs. Let's think about baseball, man. That's because this is why baseball is different from every other sport. One, because the defense has the ball, right? You not that doesn't happen in any other sport. But two, you always have a fighting chance. Like, you as a defense have to finish the game, whether it's on the field or at bat. You you have to finish the game. It's not like football, you can run the clock, or overtime rules where you score a touchdown, you don't get a chance to get the ball back of a coin toss, right? right. Or basketball, Michael Jordan saying he never lost a game, he just ran out of time. Baseball is, no, no, no. You're putting him away. Doesn't matter if it's 14 nothing or 16-14. Like, that's, that's just the beauty of baseball to me. Yeah, you're still going to get X number of at bats. So yes. yeah, there, there's no such thing as, well, there is momentum, but not in the sense that you don't get, you literally get no chances. You're always going to get that chance. Yeah. So I was actually sitting in with the, with uh, some visiting fans. There's kind of like a visiting fan section. I was kind of surrounded by um, fans of the, of the visiting team. So I was kind of um, jeering my own team. I was kind of yelling out um, at them. I was like, give me my money back, stuff like that. And then um, when, when the Tigers got their first run, the fans around me kind of cheered with me. They're like, oh, good for you. Congratulations. You got a run. But by the end of the game, man, they were just stone silent. It was such a thing of beauty. Yeah, nothing, nothing's better than seeing, like, being, being at, a, at a home stadium and you're the visitor, visiting team, and as something happens, you see the whole stadium just go. <laughs> you can hear a pin yeah. drop. It is. And also, on the flip side, being that visiting team, like, I remember, I remember, it's like, one time in high school, like, I was just having a really bad week, just feeling this really shitty, but um, I had Yankee tickets, or Fen Sox Yankee tickets um, in Fenway, and, like, I was supposed to go with someone, but he couldn't go last minute for some reason, he couldn't go, so my dad was like, let's go, me and him, so me and my dad went. And Yankees had a lead going into the ninth. And this was like a September game. Yankees weren't making the playoffs. Sox were already in. It didn't even matter. But, you know, we were first baseline under the grandstand. Really great seats. And the Sox walk it off in the 10th. And me and my dad are sitting there just head down. The stadium's going crazy. Oh, crazy. Stadium shaking. Because Fenway shakes. 
That way it's an old building. Like you hear the people go. above you stomping on the grandstand, like you know, piece of paint falling down your face, like <laughs> like people going nuts. And you know, as much as I hated it, you look around and go, shit, man, this is pretty cool. <laughs> it, it's still it, it's still pretty cool seeing forty thousand people lose their mind because you know I hate Red Sox fans. I hate them to my core, but. <laughs> They're dedicated and they love the game. They love their team. So the deep part of that core, there's a lot of respect. Yeah, you got to give props to the fans that, you know, they're not fair weather. You know, they follow the team, you know, win or lose. And I, I love that as well. I love that about the Hunting Tigers. I mean, the fans are just core. And as I said, like they went through a really dry uh, spell without any anything to cheer for. I mean, there was a 17-year spell where they finished in the last place in 10 of those 17 years. But the fans just kept on coming. Yeah, I, I tell this to a lot of people too. They're like, when it comes to playoff baseball time, I kind of like root for everybody. Because like, you know, I, I like all the teams. It's like, well, yeah, I'm a Yankee fan, right? They're like, well, why won't the Rays win the World Series or your division? It's because the Rays are a great team. They're a young team. They don't have a big budget. You know, they are everything that's right with the state of baseball. They do it correctly. I want them to succeed because above being a Yankee fan, I'm a baseball fan. I love baseball. Also, fuck the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> So that's just that's just how it works. Um, so speaking of ballparks, you got a beautiful one behind you. Um, yeah. Favorite ballpark of all time, uh, American and Japanese? Well, the Japanese one is right behind me. I mean, there's no... It, it's the king. I mean, it's the oldest ballpark in Japan, uh, built in Oof. 1924. Um, we haven't touched on this, and I, I don't know if we want to sidetrack, but there's an awesome high school baseball tournament every year, national tournament held at this stadium, actually both in the summer and in the spring. Um, but that was the purpose of this stadium being built, was to host uh, the National High School Baseball Tournament, which, as I said earlier, amateur baseball came before pro baseball in Japan and was and arguably still is more popular. So this stadium, man, I don't know if you can see it a little bit there, but it's an all dirt infield. Um, yeah, I was just going to just gonna ask that. I was like, is that all dirt? That's very interesting. Never seen that before. Yeah, well, you know, all the stadiums used to be all dirt. Um, but every single other stadium in Japan has um, kind of modernized itself, if you will. I guess with budget and stuff like that, right? Like er in the early days, there wasn't a lot of money uh, when it came to building the stadiums and maintaining them and stuff. But because this is such an iconic ballpark um, and the high school kids all play on all dirt um, infields wherever they're playing all across the nation. And so this it's not to replicate what they're used to, but it's it's because it's so iconic now. I mean, every kid dreams of playing at Koshien Stadium. Mm. So they're keeping it the same. There's no way they're ever going to make it a grass infield, ever. Honestly, so I love it. I love it. Don't do it. It's, it's old school. It's different. It's unique. Don't fix what doesn't need fixing. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have to be like everybody else, that's for sure. Yeah, 100%. So and that, that's true in baseball and in life, anyways. Um, so favorite ballpark in North America or in the world? Um you know, I haven't been to a ton, but I definitely, like, I enjoyed Safeco when I was there. I could probably list you on one hand, though, the the stadiums that I've been to in North America. So there's not a lot to choose from, but Safeco was a good experience for me. I want to get out to, you know, um, as many MLB stadiums as I can, though, someday. Yeah, no, me as well. Me as well. So that's a good segue to the the, the, the tour you do. So tell me about the tour. Um, goes goes around the, the Japanese ballparks. Like, like how... How close are they in proximity to each other? Because obviously Japan's one islands, two islands, few islands. It's it's main four islands. main islands, four main islands, and there's ballparks on three of the four. Um, okay. So there are twelve NPB teams. Five of them are located in the greater Tokyo region, and so you can see almost half of the ballparks just like probably within. They're all within an hour of central Tokyo. So that's kind of, I guess, good in a sense. And actually, recently, this tour has opened up uh, just a, a Tokyo-only um, option, I guess, if you will. Mm -hmm. So originally, this started um, in 1999. And um, they had originally set it into three kind of sets. There was the main tour, the see it more, and the see it all. And so it's you can imagine what that means. But the main tour was six ballparks. Uh, see it more was nine, and see it all was 12. And so... You're, you're starting in Tokyo, generally speaking, and then you're making your way around Japan, going to one home game at each of the uh, team's home ballparks. And, uh, you know, there's a few days off in the middle where you can go check out like sumo or whatever you want to do. Like if you want to check out some other aspect of Japanese culture, 
there's time to do that as well. But the main focus of the tour is baseball. And so um, the operator of the tour is American and living in America. And so he's coming over here. Um, but then I had, I kind of got hooked up with them when I one time offered my services and um, they said no thanks, but then they had an extra ticket to the game because somebody was sick or somebody bailed on the tour or whatever. Um, so I went along with them and the operator of the tour, I didn't realize this, but he was kind of putting me to the test. He just said like, do you want to join us? And I basically like, I, I kind of guided them to the park. And then during the game, they just asked me questions about what's going on. Like, who is that guy? Or why do they do this? Why do they do that? How come Japanese baseball has this? Um, and I answered every question, I guess, just because of my knowledge and interest in the game. And afterwards he was like, man, do you realize like you're exactly what we need? And so now whenever they come to Japan, um, I generally just stick to my area, like my part of Japan, but when they come through our, my region, I'm kind of the local guide for them. So it's a lot of fun. It's a really cool tour and will, man, you need to, uh, join it sometime for sure. I will hundred percent. Cause that sounds absolutely incredible. Like literally I'm going to get off. Once you got this call, I call my Freddie Ranky. You'd be like, yo, save up for Japan. Cause one, one day we're <laughs> going, um, do you see mostly tourists on this tour or is a lot of like, um, I guess Japanese, I want to say Japanese families, um, you know, like, cause that's a great, that's a great vacation to do. If someone's like a Japanese, like Japanese family, like their kids love baseball. You just go around tour, tour, all different stadiums, or is it more tourism? It's, it's all tourism, actually. Like, I don't know if I've ever seen a local Japanese person join the tour. Um, really? Yeah. Yeah. So it's almost all, almost exclusively people living in America. Um, occasionally we'll get people joining from other parts of like maybe Southeast Asia or other countries, but it's generally speaking America, Canada. 